In JavaScript, there are two types of data type. One is primitive and other is object. So before we move on in this course, let's understand the difference between a primitive type and object. Let's start with primitive type. In JavaScript, there are five primitive data types and these are number, string, boolean, null and undefined. These are five primitive data types in JavaScript and primitive types are value types. So let's understand what we mean by value types. Let's create a variable. Let's call it X and let's assign it with a value 20. Let's create another variable. Let's call it Y. And to this Y variable, let's assign this X variable. And then let's change the value of X to 50. Now in primitive type, when we assign a variable to another variable, the value stored in that variable gets copied to that new variable. Here we have declared a variable X and assigned it with the value 20. And then we are creating another variable Y and assigning it with variable X. So since this is a primitive type, since we are storing a number in this variable X, the data type of this X is number. And for Y, we are assigning this X variable. And since the data type of this variable X is number, the data type of variable Y will also be number. So number is a primitive type. And in case of primitive type, when we assign a variable to another variable, the value which is stored in that variable will get copied. So the value stored in this variable X will be copied and assigned to this variable Y. Okay. And then we are changing the value of X to 50. Okay. But here changing the value of X will not affect the value of Y. Okay. So this val variable X and Y are independent of each other. And that's why when we log this X and Y in developer console, so let's log X and let's also log Y, save the changes. And when we refresh the page, you will see that for X, 50 is logged and for Y, 20 is logged. So changing the value of X to 50 has not affected the value of Y. So value, uh, variable X and Y are independent of each other. Let's understand this visually. Consider, th consider this as the memory of the computer. So when we run our program, we are first declaring a variable X and assigning it with the value 20. So somewhere in this memory, a boxed label as X will be created and this 20 will be stored in that box. Okay. And then we are creating another variable Y and assigning it with the value of this variable X. So another box labeled as Y will be created somewhere in the memory and it will store the value which, which we have assigned to it. So we are assigning this variable X and the value stored in this variable X is 20. So that 20 will get copied to this variable Y. And that's what you see here. And then we are changing the value of X to 50. And since this variable X and Y are independent, changing the value of X has not affected the value of Y. So here the value of X has changed to 50, but it has not affected the value of Y. Okay, so in case of primitive types, the value is what gets copied when we try to assign a variable to another variable. Now, let's try to do the same thing with objects. So let's comment this first. And let's create an object. And to create an object, we use this curly braces. So this syntax is called as object literals. And this object is going to have a name property and let's say name is John and it is also going to have an age property and let's say age is 28 and let's assign this object to a variable and let's call that variable obj1 so let's create a variable obj1 and let's assign this object to this obj1 variable and here it should be comma 
Now let's create another variable. Let's call it obj2. And to this obj2, let's assign obj1. Now in case of objects, when we create this object, this object will be stored somewhere in the memory. And when we assign this object to a variable, it will not, we are not assigning the object itself. We are assigning the memory address of this object where it is stored. So this obj1 will store the memory address where this object is stored. That means this obj1 will store the reference to this object. And then we are assigning this obj1 to obj2. So here, the reference stored in this obj1, the memory address stored in this obj1 will be copied to this obj2 variable. Okay, so here, the object is not being copied itself. The memory address or the reference to that object is being copied from this variable to this variable. Now, let's change the age property of obj1 to something else. So, from 28, let's change it to 30. So, let's say obj1 dot age equals, let's say 35. Okay. And now, when we log obj1 and obj2, so console.log obj1 and let's also log obj2. So let's log obj2. Now, when we log this obj1 and obj2, you will notice that we here we have only changed the age property for obj1, but the change is also reflecting in obj2. So this is obj1, this is obj2. And you see here we have changed the age of obj1, but this change is also reflecting in obj2. And why is that? That is because both this obj1 and obj2 are holding a reference to the same object. So when we make change on one object, it will get reflected in other object as well. Let's understand this visually. So again, consider this as the memory of your computer. So when we run the program, first we are creating an object and we are storing it in this obj1 variable. So this object will be stored somewhere in the memory okay so here this object is stored at this memory location 0x 1 2 3 4 5 and we are assigning this object to this obj1 variable so this obj1 will not store the object itself it will store the memory address where this object is stored and this object is stored at this location and you see here this obj1 is storing the reference to that object, the memory address of this object. It is not storing the object itself. It is storing the memory address, the reference to that object. Now, when we are creating another variable obj2 and assigning this obj1 to obj2, so this memory address will get copied from obj1 to obj2. So this obj2 will also have the reference to that same object because both of them are storing the same reference so both of these objects are referencing to the same object and that's why when we change the value when we change the age on obj1 object this age will get changed here so it will change from 28 to 35 so this change will reflect will be reflected in this obj2 as well because both of them are referencing the same object so here we are changing the value of age in this object and since both of these two objects are referencing to the same object that change is visible in obj1 and obj2 as well so in case of objects the reference is what gets copied from one variable to another variable in case of primitive the value is copied from one variable to another variable but in case of objects the reference is what gets copied from one variable to another variable So let's comment this. Okay, and that is why the reference types, the objects are called as reference types. So objects are reference type because reference of the object is what get, gets copied from one variable to another variable. And in JavaScript, everything apart from, apart from these five primitive types are objects. So an array 
is an object in JavaScript. A function is an object in JavaScript. An object is an object in JavaScript and so on. Okay. Now let's see when we do the equality check, how the equality happens. The equality check happens for primitive and objects. So equality check. Let's create a variable x. Let's assign it with value 10. Let's create another variable y. Let's also assign it with, with this value 10. And let's say console.log. And now we want to check if variable x is equal to variable y. So for that we say x equal to equal to y. If x is equal to y, then it will return true. Otherwise it will return false. So we have learned this in the comparison operator lecture, right? So every comparison operator returns a Boolean value true or false. So here we are checking if x equals y. If it is if x is equals y, then it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the primitive types are value types. So here, this since we are storing this number 10 to this x variable, and we are also storing this number 10 to this y variable, both this x and y are of number data type. And number is primitive data type. And in case of primitive data types, the value is what is checked during equality. So here, when we do the equality check on primitive type, the value stored in this variable x will be checked for equality with the value stored in this variable y. Okay, so the values will be compared for equality. If the values are same, then it will return true. If the values are different, it will return false. So let's save the changes and you will see since both X and Y are storing the same value, it will return true. Okay, so it is returning true. On the other hand, if values are different, the equality will return false. Since the value stored in X is different from the value stored in Y, it will return false. Okay, so in case of primitive type, when we do the equality check, the value is what the value stored in the variable is what is checked for equality. Now let's do the same thing with objects. So let's comment this. And let's create an object. So let's create a variable first and let's call it obj1. And for this variable, we are going to store an, you know, we are going to assign an object to this obj1. So let's create Inside this object, let's have two properties, name, let's say John. And let's also have the age property. And let's say age is 28. Okay. So here we have created an object and we have assigned it to this obj1. Let's create another object and let's assign it to another variable obj2. Okay, so obj2. Now both of these objects have same properties and same values for each property. So this obj1 and obj2 both have this name and age property and both of these properties have are assigned with same values. But when we create this obj1, this obj1, I mean, the, when we create this object, it will be stored somewhere in the memory. And this obj1 will hold the reference to that memory address. When we create this object, it will also get stored somewhere in the memory. And this obj2 will store the memory address of that object. So here, the reference stored in obj1 is different from the reference stored in obj2. And although both of these objects have same properties and same values, when we do the equality check, it will return false. So console.log obj1 equals obj2. And if you remember, in case of reference, I mean, in case of objects, the reference is what is checked. So here the reference stored in obj1 is different from the reference stored in obj2 and that's why it will return false. So when I refresh the page, it is returning false. Let's understand this visually. So here we are creating an object and we are assigning it to the obj1. So this object will be stored somewhere in the memory. So here it is stored at this memory address 0x12341. And this obj1 is storing the reference to that object. So 0x12341. 
then we are creating another object obj2 so obj2 is the variable name and here we are creating the object so again this object will be created and stored in somewhere in this memory so let's say it is stored at this memory location so this obj2 will store the reference to that object the memory address to that object and since the reference in obj1 is different from reference stored in obj2 this you know the reference stored in obj1 this memory address is different from the reference stored in obj2 and that is why when we do the equality check it is returning false so in case of objects when we do the equality check the reference are compared the reference values are compared okay so let's comment this code also and let's make some space now we have we already know that an array is also an object in javascript right so let's create an array let's call it x and let's assign it with some elements so 10 20 30 so this x array has three elements let's log this okay let's create another variable let's call it y and assign it with the value of x so since x is an object so it should be array since x is an array and array is an object in javascript so when we assign this x to this variable y the since this is an object this x will you know store the reference to this array this array will be stored somewhere in the memory and this x will store the reference to that memory and when we assign this x to this y this reference stored in this x variable will be copied to this y variable right and that's why let's also log this y so console.log y let's save this let's refresh the page okay so both of these are referencing to the same memory address where this array is stored both of them are logging the same value same array okay now if we change this array let's say y dot push and we are trying to push a new element in this y array let's say we pass maybe 50 okay and now let's log this x and y again so let's copy this let's use it here and let's also copy this console.log statement and let's use it here now since we are pushing this new element to this y and since both x and y are referencing to the same memory address to the same array making change in one array will also get reflected in other array so if we save this you will notice that since we have only pushed an element in this y array if we refresh the page you will see that element is also displaying in this x array okay so here this x and y are referencing to the same memory address where this array is stored and then using this y variable we are pushing a new element in that array and since both x and y are referencing to that same memory address the change done in one array is being reflected in other array so both x and y are logging the same array okay so i hope the difference between a primitive type and object type is clear to you if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends